Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and I was recently at a Mexican market in Las Vegas when I ran across this map. And at first I thought, oh cool, it's a flag map, I love those. But then I realized the makers of it were bold enough to finally answer the Danish question, does Denmark border Sweden? And the answer is no, because Denmark does not exist. Alongside Greenland, of course. But yeah, there's a whole host of other very big, very obvious issues of this map. And I wanted to go through, because every time I find one of these maps, be it in person or online, I just love to save the worst and weirdest bad maps. Some of them are are bad because you question how they even got drawn that way, and some of them are bad because they have an interesting but true question, such as can Queen Elizabeth II be charged with a crime? And the answer is only yes in <laughs> South Sudan. Anyway, how, how and why does all of this stuff happen? Allow me to dive in with today's video. So first things first, this is a really interesting bad map because again, it's weird that your brain isn't immediately drawn to most of it, besides maybe that they blurred out some of Canada and the northern bit of Russia. Why is Russia blurred above that line when they clearly have Norway and Finland going above there and the answer is well they had interesting decisions but it means that the Russian flag is not laid onto here correctly also you can tell they don't have South Sudan on this map that's the real crime definitely not the fact that they missed out everything east of Papua New Guinea including the Solomon Islands all of Oceania including uh, like New Zealand everything besides Australia it seems and also Madagascar is missing also as you can see they've solved the Falk Falkland Island conflicts by making sure there are no Falkland Islands and so as you can see Argentina is so happy to hear that news. What did they do? That Someone did this deliberately. I'm convinced. You can't make this many mistakes, like excluding Hawaii when it's a map that I found in the US, right? So how can you make this many mistakes? And the answer is the person who made it just hates islands and also Denmark. <laughs> you know, who loves Denmark? Maybe they were trying to remove uh, Greenland from the map and it just accidentally deleted all of Denmark. That's the best I can think. But then that means they had such a high quality map that they could delete by country. And so how did this happen? Who knows? Speaking of things I don't know how they happened, this 2012 political map of the world. Try and come up with an explanation as to how this came across. Because obviously, first things first, we have to disregard the thing above it. I thought that this must just be like someone put a funny caption over their like alternate history map or something like that. Or maybe it's just an influence map of the world. Because obviously, the US does have heavily influence on both Mexico and Canada, and I guess Greenland. And obviously, Russia has heavy influence on the eastern half of Europe. But then it gets really confusing with like, so why does China have the dynastic uh, the Qing Dynasty flag, I think it's called. What? Why do they have the Xing Dynasty flag going on over here? I don't understand it. What? You know, like uh, looking looking a little bit more. India's flag's a bit weird. Australia has three separate flags. Why? What? How? Uh, and so yeah, there's a lot of things that might make some sense here, but it starts to fall apart that it's clearly not even like a political influence map. So maybe it's like a political dream map. It's what they dream the future is because they've united Ireland, but then divided the UK up into countries, but then also given everything in Europe, including France. Uh, over to the Russians, besides Austria, Hungary, and Germany, which now gets part of Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, but not all of it. Um, there's a huge Moroccan and Turkish empire, and I just, I just really, I really can't think about how this map even got put together. Even if you were trying to make a bad map, you would, you would, it wouldn't work out this way. Because why is Belgium here? Why is France here? How did France lose this territory but move into Chad? Uh, I just don't understand any of it. Speaking of things I don't know. By the way, also the Turkish flag, um, you know, like because apparently they rule the entire Middle East for some reason now, perfectly lines up with the Russian flag. So I have no idea where Turkey ends and Russia begins, which is, you know, really the beautiful thing that we will learn from this map. Also, Japan owns all of Korea, including the North. So problem solved in 2012. If only we had carried out this beautiful vision of a united <laughs> world. Speaking of united world, I need to uh, dive into the next map here because this is where in the world marijuana is illegal. And I, I, I apologize for saying that this would be bad maps because there's actually nothing wrong with this map. It's just a really informative way of knowing exactly where you can get legal in some form, decriminalized or inconsistently enforced. And then for some reason, none of those colors line up with the US, but that's just, that's that's basically no issue. There, there are no other issues anywhere else anywhere in the world. Everything is perfectly as it should be. And we can move on to this map. I really like this one. Um, I've seen this all the time and people just say, wow, do you know how idiotic we were in the 13th century? Apparently 1581. Do you know how idiotic we were before modern day globe maps? This is what we really thought the world looked like. Because we only used to know about the three continents, right? Europe, Asia, and Africa. And they all do roughly meet where Jerusalem is. So this is roughly a map of the world, apparently at the time. Uh, what I think is funny, by the way, before we can go any further into this, because obviously, just so you know, this isn't a accurate map of the world. It was a stylistic map. It is a, it's a thing deliberately designed to show like 
that Jerusalem's in the center. Because, uh, you know, they, they do acknowledge there is an America over there, which messes things up. They even acknowledge, if you look a little closer here, which I think is funny, that England is up over here, and that Denmark and Sweden are their own separate blob going all the way off to the edge of the world. Honestly, you know, that's, that's the weird thing. Like, what did you imagine happened if you went too far north in Denmark or Sweden? Which, by the way, according to this map, they do border each other. I'm starting to get confused now. But yeah, this is this is a deliberately awful map. Uh, the, it, or I guess it's a stylistic map. It's trying to show the power uh, that Jerusalem has in the same way that this map might be trying to show the power the US has. Or maybe it's just a broken map. I'm really not sure. I, we, we, I'm going to need some more theories on that. Speaking of theories, this is a really well put together map that shows uh, where various... Uh, different, uh, you know, like things happened. As you can see, it's letting you know about uh, July 17, July 24, and July 23. Uh, there were multiple crash uh, crashes that happened that week, and uh, everything's great about this map. But what I wonder is how did they find the stock footage to place this over? Like, so this is a stock map where they placed three, uh, you know, like kind of okay uh, points. However, where is France? Like, how do you just delete France from a map? I genuinely don't understand how that happens. Also, why is Mongolia labeled in the middle here? Like, this is someone at the LA Times, if you're curious, wait, oh wait, there you go, Sauna LA Times graphics, or I guess Raul, um, like, I, how do they use a map like this? Is, what, what is going on with the Balkans? Why, is this Serbia inside of Greater Yugoslavia, or is this Bosnia that didn't join a Greater Yugoslavia? Like, how, how is this map ever existing in the first place? That's what I don't get, because it's so perfectly accurate to the places where it's horrifically not accurate. Do they just move things and not even realize? I don't know what's happening here. Uh, speaking of things that I don't understand, as to what's happening, because it's kind of crazy by itself, uh, by the way, is this map right here. Um, it shows the flights that the Atla the, uh, the, uh, the Atlanta, whatever they're called, that the Falcons uh, had to do to fly to London. So they flew from Atlanta to Baltimore, then they flew from Baltimore to London, and then from, Lo uh, from London to Atlanta, which as you can see looks like this. Atlanta to Baltimore, Baltimore to London, and then, no wait, sorry, Atlanta, to yeah, you know, that, this is Atlanta to Baltimore to London. You know, none of this makes any sense by itself. Also, is this London? Who, in what world is this London? I, like, seriously, even if you're the most not familiar of the world American, you wouldn't assume this is London, right? And, like, that's Barcelona or something, you know, whatever. So, big, big mistake going on with this map. Also, same thing here. Just, I mean, <laughs> like, how does this mistake get made? Uh, you know, do you remember Giant, Giant Hornets? Wouldn't that have been a more fun issue for the world to be facing? You know, I bet maybe something, something people would stay inside. Am I right? Yeah, high quality political commentary from Toy Cat. The only political commentary I, I have, though, is what if we did just give Hong Kong to Brazil? Wouldn't that solve all of the world's problems? I mean, if you look at the world right now, oh, sorry, if you look at the world right now, uh, you'll see that the big... <laughs> Joke aside, you'll see the biggest problem is that like, okay, Hong Kong is under China's rule because China feels like, well, yeah, we can't have the British being on the other side of the world, like having this, that's a colonial. So you know what? Brazil, they never, are, you know, in the same way that the best person to lead a country is someone who's never asked. I bet Brazil has never lodged a claim to Hong Kong. I bet if we go through all the records, they have not even once. And so we give Hong Kong to Brazil. They get to be an autonomous province under Brazilians. They might have to learn some Portuguese or whatever, but then problem solved. Actually, that could be a good solution for Macau. You know, give it, give it back, give it, give it over to Brazil. If we, if, you know, new rule, if there's ever a territorial dispute, we give the proceeds to Brazil, and that way it's, you know, we'll be more motivated to make changes. Like, ooh, you know, on the one hand, Gibraltar, the Spanish really want it back, but we kind of want to keep it. But if we can't agree, Brazil gets it. And do we want Brazil to be here? Ooh, maybe we should make an agreement here. Just saying, agree to give everything to Brazil and all your problems go away. It's been helping me in my relationship great, by the way. Speaking of things that help me great in my relationship with Antarctica, this is a map of the world centered around Antarctica. Again, this is a real map of the world, but it's also just like, oh, this, this, there's a reason that, you know, some people say like, well, all the map projections we use are, are so racist because they have the, the part of the world where everyone lives rather than the parts where no one does. You know, Northern Hemisphere heavy tends to be the case. Like the equator should be going through the middle of any map view use but it kind of breaks everything if you do that because there's just not enough land to the south of the equator or people or you know things that you know e even even brazil's newest territory isn't in the southern uh, hemisphere and so um yeah basically it's like yeah so that's that's a problem people have however solution to that problem you could say is center the world around antarctica then no one's happy no one can work out how anything relates to anything and also people would understand how you can fly from la to uh, America in less time than you can fly from LA. Oh, sorry, from <laughs> from uh, from Australia 
to like LA or California or whatever, then you can fly, or you can fly from Australia to Dallas, Texas faster than you can fly from Australia to the UK. Even though it looks kind of counterintuitive on this map, uh, actually, you know, when you see the divide going around here, it kind of becomes obvious. But a lot of people don't understand how, for instance, you can fly from Australia to South Africa because, I mean, like that, that, sh that only makes sense on a on a curved world or something like that. I, I wait, wait, what's the really weird flight that doesn't make sense besides for curves? I think it's Australia to Brazil, where you get real big advantage of going over the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, anyway, speaking of things that don't make any sense, unless you go over the Southern Hemisphere, this map right here. Oh wait, this is the wrong map. This map right here. You know, wait, this one, this one, this one, there we go. So this shows how many Switzerland's would fit in Brazil. And I looked into it and then I found this, which is a map it shows you Switzerland, which is 41,000 square kilometers. That is bigger than my house by a little bit. But um, yeah, so it, it shows you uh, the, the size of Switzerland. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty nice little uh, you know, comparison, but it shows you in comparison to anything you could imagine. So Switzerland is about as big as uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. I mean, Bosnia is 1.24 Switzerland's big, whereas Belgium is 0.74 Switzerland's big. So it's a great way to kind of measure the world. Azerbaijan is 2.1 Switzerland's, etc., etc. And so I figured it'd be fun to scroll through because you can compare it to anything you want. You can compare it to um, Frankfurt, Germany, and you'll realize Frankfurt is actually a city and not as big as it. But on the other hand, if we go to Gambel and Ethiopia, it's almost as big. We can then start going really crazy on this, right? And we can go like, what about Gotham from the DC Comics? <laughs> Apparently Gotham City, not as big as Switzerland. Uh, we can also do things like, okay, what about England, right? Are you, are you curious about the size of the, the, the country air quotes that I live in? Compared, to, is England not on here? Well, Europe, did you know it, Europe is 247 times as big as Switzerland? I think England's down here somewhere, right? Yeah, England is 3.16 times as big as Switzerland. However, uh, the map also shows you something interesting, which is if you look down here, you can see the United States. You can even go of just the state that I saw that first map in and the state I'll be in as you see this video. Uh, wow, Nevada is 6.94 times as big as Switzerland. That's a big state or a small Switzerland, you're right. And actually, wait, so if if, uh, if England is 3.94, if, if, if England is 3.16 times as big, is Nevada twice as big as England? Is If the UK is only 5.88 Switzerland's and Nevada is six point something Switzerland's, that means Nevada has more land area than the UK. And that's kind of crazy, right? That's that's like one of the states. That's literally just one of them. That is that. Can that be mathematically correct? You know, it must be. It's on the Switzerland website. Speaking of uh, this <laughs> fun websites, this is uh, a map of uh, the UK according to Americans. Oh uh, look, it's funny because they only go to London. Let's be honest. That's if you're gonna visit one place in the UK, we can we can say, oh, you gotta go to the Yorkshire Dales, mate. Uh, but like, yeah, you should visit London first. Then I could say, I think York is a great city to visit, or like Edinburgh, or like you know, maybe maybe check out some some of the weird, uh, you know, like uh, countryside and like Wales or whatever else. I think Snowdonia is a great example. But like, you know, like I think London is the first place you should go. And so we're kind of condescending when we're saying, oh, why do Americans always go there? Because it's the big city. It's where it's the it's where a lot of the interesting things are because there's so many people there for the things to be located around. But anyway, this is uh, the, the reason I wanted to show you this map is because London, uh, you know, being the entirety of the, this is also how people uh, inside of the M25 see it. This is also how anyone who lives inside of London sees the UK. It's like, oh yeah, there's London, then there's like really North London, there's real South London. There's a lot of not London up there, but no one lives there, so it's fine. And uh, yeah, this is this this is definitely not going to offend any of my British non-Londoner viewers, which is why I wanted to show you this very useful map. Uh, to confirm that Greater London is not just greater in the sense that it covers the whole of the UK, it actually covers the entirety of the planet. Is there anything, you know, I, is there anything in the world that would be worth living in if there isn't a decent connection to London? The answer is no, which is why I chose an airport with direct flights to the UK. See, it's all making sense now, huh? Anyway, speaking of things that make sense to people who watch this video, before we, <laughs> I just love this map so much, by the way, have to give, have to give extreme credit to uh, the person who made this. But speaking of credit, I want to talk about how many Switzerland fit in Brazil. It's so many. Brazil is so big. It deserves another Switzerland. We should, we should, I think Europeans, you know, like come together and let's, let's give Brazil a Switzerland. Uh, so then there could be one Switzerland bigger. Speaking of things that Brazil could be made bigger, here is a map of countries arranged by geographical location. Ooh, look how great this map is. As you can see, um, every, you know, honestly, this map isn't correct, right? Hawaii isn't arranged correctly. 
And also countries are kind of small. It's like really cramped in weird ways. Um, but yeah, I want to point this one out just because I'm, I'm going to mention this in my next video. I, I, really, I, I recorded a video earlier this week that I didn't realize couldn't go up until July. And so I'm going to reference this is coming in the future, but it's actually in the past. Yeah, wrap your head around that. It's just like I had to wrap my head around the fact that Queen Elizabeth II cannot be charged with a crime where I live. One of the weird things about having a monarchy is the monarch is sovereign, uh, sovereign by sovereignty uh, immune. Like laws do not apply to the sovereign because she is the sovereign from which all power derives. Um, it also means she doesn't have to write her own passports. And there's a whole bunch of other dumb things. She doesn't have a driving license either, which I'm just saying a woman her age, maybe she should get one. But anyway, uh, there's also when she goes to other countries because she's the head of state, for the UK, it means she is diplomatically immune. So obviously in countries where she's also the queen, she's both sovereignly immune and diplomatically immune. In countries where she's uh, not the queen, but she is our queen, she is diplomatically immune. Try and charge her of a crime, and that is against international laws. That's not how it works. And then there is one country on earth, the Solomon Islands, where they apparently don't give diplomatic immunity to heads of state, but they do give diplomatic immunity to the queen as... I guess, the head, head of their state. And then finally, we have three countries, South Sudan, uh, Vanatu, and Palau, that will charge Queen Elizabeth II with a crime, which sounds like a threat, but I'm guessing based on the fact that all three countries are new, they just don't have certain statutes. I tried to look into this question nonstop. I couldn't find anything. All I could find was this funny article, what would happen if the Queen went on a crime spree? spree. This is from the University of Law. This is like a award-winning article. And the answer is that, yeah, did you know that if the, the Queen uh, went to the uh, went into her nearest Barclays branch and demanded that a cashier fill a bin bag with everything behind the counter marked Elizabeth R., very funny, um, and no one was killed, And but she did have lots of evidence, even the proof that she has confessed, can you prosecute our head of state? And the answer is that no, not only is she, um, you know, like immune because like, well, we got to preserve the dignity of the office and blah, 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 blah. So like, okay, so she can't be prosecuted under that. But then also there's a problem that government officials have this extra layer by themselves. But then also there's the issue of diplomatic immunity. And so because there's so many layers of immunity, they basically say that like, yeah, no one actually knows how this works. Well, international law might help us later. Uh, it's mostly about domestic law, sovereign immunity. And then they just say that actually, because it's a customary principle, the only way, the last time it was tested in 1911, the king committed bigamy. What is bigamy? It sounds not good. But anyway, the king committed, uh, uh, was accused of committing bigamy, and uh, he could not be uh, ordered to give evidence because he was the king, and that was the end of that. Yeah, let's find out what bigamy is. Bigamy, oh, de definitely type that wrong. Uh, bigamy. It is the offense of marrying someone while already married to another person. Did he really? Bigamy King George. Did he did he commit bigamy and then he didn't get charged? Or is it was it a sham trial? Edward the Mill Oh, okay. So he, a journalist got ja jailed for it, which is interesting. You know, I is is bigamy really why why does bigamy need to be a crime? This this seems like one of those old timey crimes. Um, in countries that have bigamy laws, with a few exception, consent from a prior spouse makes no difference to the legality of the second marriage, which is usually considered void. Oh, you can sneakily marry a second person, then be like, aha, I was already married. Checkmate. <laughs> does, does everyone want to uh, be my first wife? Like, we can, we can get some tax advantages or whatever, and then I can go marry people? Oh, wait. Oh, there's... Ooh. Wait, let's see what the... What's the punishment in the UK? Uh, illegal, although they may be recognized if they're performed abroad. Uh, on indictment, up to seven years imprisonment. Okay, so let's not do that. Let's not do it. You know, where can I just... Okay, where can I... Okay, I, I can go to Sudan. I mean, the queen can't come with me. We won't get married. But we can go to Sudan. I guess not. It's not South Sudan, actually. So, you know, anyway, with that said, I hope you all enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, the answer to your question is, I don't know. Find out. Leave it in the comments and I'll, I'll be, I'll happily pin your silliest theory because there doesn't seem to be a solid answer. The only thing I, the only thing I can find is sources pointing to this map, which isn't useful. Speaking of things that aren't useful, I be, th this whole channel, right? Let's be honest. What's, what, what is it? Am I just talking over Google Chrome? Is that, it's, it's actually, I use Opera. It's a nicer browser. But uh, what, 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 what am I doing? This isn't a valid excuse for a channel. I totally agree. But if you'd like to give me money for my high quality sponsorships, um, such as this video was sponsored by Patreon, you can become a Patreon at patreon.com slash toycat 
And there are right now, there are two patrons at Lobster Roll tier, which meant I had a lovely lobster roll earlier. It was really good. Would you like to feed me kebabs that are bad for my soul? I apparently have to buy nine of those a month. And, or a strange beverage, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash toycat. None of the money will go into improving these videos. I'm just pocketing it so I can buy nice things myself. And, um, j j you know, I, I think that's uh, important to say. But, and that's also what I'm going to do with sponsorship money too. Again, I, you might say like, oh, these sponsorships are necessary to invest in the channel. No, 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 no. These sponsorships, these sponsorships and this Patreon are necessary so I can invest in the most important thing, which is, as we all know, a good, a good kebab or a strange beverage. Anyway, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope you found it interesting because I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs> hmm, second channel, don't care.